Christoph. Welcome back to Peace Storm. We are playing Danganronpa and getting deeper and deeper into Chapter Four. Up. Oh. Yeah, something might have happened. Huh? Was that someone screaming? I think it came from the dining hall. Yep. I'm not sure at this point whether to uh, think somebody's dead or not, but seeing how it usually, usually it plays automatically. Oh, uh, Makoto, we got a big problem, man. What's wrong? Look! Hero's finger shook as he pointed. Hina? Are you okay? What happened? She killed her. Genocide Jill killed Hina. No, 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 no. She's not dead. Open your eyes. No way she's dead. Why? What happened? Well, Toko and Hina, all of a sudden they were yelling and then they knocked the pepper off the table. And that led to a sneeze? Her giant balloons are a little too perfect, aren't they? I might be flat, but at least mine are real. And look at my shapely collarbone. Doesn't it just totally set you on fire? Anyway, you totally non-adorable boys can just get her out of my sight, okay? Or else... I'll start cutting and cutting and cutting and indulging myself for who knows how long. Okay, then. Let's just get Hina to the nurse's office. Come on, hero. Help me. Sure thing. Wee-oo, wee-oo. <laughs> Genocide Jack's abrasive laugh chased us out of the room as we carried Hina away. By the time I finished taking care of Hina's injury in the nurse's office, she seemed to have finally regained her composure. Thank you. Are you sure you're feeling better? Yeah. It really was just a scratch. But still, that was super close. If I hadn't yelled out, you'd be dead right now. It's all thanks to me, you know? Yes, well, a thousand thanks to you, sir. So sarcastic. That just makes it sound even more hostile. Hey, Hina, what the heck happened? Oh, um, we just got into a fight, and I lost my temper and flew off the handle. Let me guess, the fight was because of Sakura? At first, I tried to just ignore it. If you let jerk buttholes get to you all the time, you'll never have time left to live your life. But she wouldn't let it go, so I just... Without thinking about it, I felt like I wanted to punch her like a dozen times. A dozen punches isn't really without thinking. And then things got out of hand, Gen er And when things got out of hand, Genocide Jack got let loose, right? It's my own fault, but I just couldn't take it anymore. Because... Because... Because she was saying all these terrible things about my friend, you know? Before I knew it, Hina's eyes started welling up with tears. And just as the tears were on the brink of spilling over, the door to the nurse's over the door to the nurse's office burst open. I thought the door was gonna fly off its hinges, and there stood before us Hina. Sakura. You're hurt. What happened? Oh, nothing. It's not a big deal. Makoto, hero, what's the meaning of this? It wasn't me. It was Genocide Jill. It's all that demented, murderous fiend's fault. <sighs> to hurt Hina. Damn you. To leave me alone, but hurt her. What is this? What is this? Uh, I'm okay, really. It's just a scratch. <sighs> Unforgivable. I can't forgive them. Uh. Hero, if you want to hate someone, hate me. But if you want to hurt someone, hurt me. I don't hate you exactly. Why? 
Somebody save me! Hero nearly tripped over himself as he ran screaming out of the nurse's office. Just a second later... What's going on? What's all this noise about? Kyoko stood in the doorway of the nurse's office, taking Hero's spot in the room. I gather that something happened. Kyoko, please, you have to stop Sakura. You don't need to stop me. I'm okay. I'm not going to do anything. I just... I'm drawing a line right here and now. Drawing a line? Goodbye. Wait, Sakura. Hina sprang into action, leaving the nurse's office to chase after Sakura. The only ones left were... Um, Kyoko? Are you still mad? Yeah, I figured. It's fine. Huh? About that issue we discussed earlier. It doesn't matter anymore. Then, do you forgive me for not being able to talk about it? You could have told me about Sakura and Monokuma fighting, but you stayed quiet. You were only thinking of Sakura, and that's why you didn't tell me, right? You didn't want to confuse everyone until you could talk to her and not be and be sure of what you saw. That's what you were thinking, and that's why you didn't tell me, right? Yeah. To think like that. I wouldn't have expected such arrogance from you. What? Because ultimately, that means you don't trust me. No, that's not it. But if that's how you feel, I can't really change your mind. I'm sorry. It's fine. I've already forgotten about it. Besides... I may have overreacted. Huh? Anyway, it's over and done with. Like I said, let's just forget about it. Uh, okay, thank you. Hmm? Oh, right. Right, it. Something else. What is it you wanted to talk to me about? Actually, I'd like you to come somewhere with me. I have business there. Where? Just come with me and you'll find out. I guess, but... Well then, shall we get going? With her typical indifference, Kyoko turned and walked away, setting a brisk pace. Uh, Kyoko! I hurried to catch up to her. She walked ahead in silence, and in silence I chased her, and eventually we arrived. The dressing room? So the something else you mentioned? That's right. It has to do with alter ego. But you said we didn't need alter ego anymore. I didn't say we didn't need him. I just said, I just said he had done his job. Besides... It's not us that needs Alter Ego. He has business with us. Huh? Alter Ego asked me to bring others to come see him. Apparently he has something he wants to ask us. Alter Ego wants to ask us something? The laptop isn't in here anymore. Now it's sitting on the chair. Hello. Oh, um... So it's just the two of you, Kyoko and Makoto? Kyoko's fingers glided across, across the keyboard. No, it's okay. Two should be plenty. But what is, it, what is it he wants to ask us? Let's find out, shall we? Kyoko typed in the question. Oh, yeah, so... I'd like you to take me somewhere where you can connect me to the school network. What? Kyoko and I quickly glanced at each other. She replied, Well, um, you said my job was done, right? But to just stop here, saying I finished my work, I don't want that. I want to keep being helpful to everyone. I want to work as hard as everyone else so that we can all get out of here. That's, that's what Master would want, too. So, to help everyone else... To solve the mystery of the school, the only way I can help is if you connect me to the school's network. But if you did that, 
that's basically suicide. I'm positive the Mastermind would find out about it. They'd find you and they'd... You agree, right, Kyoko? I realize how dangerous it could be. But still, I have to do this. I'm scared, but I can handle it. I don't really understand why, but when I think about everyone else, my courage starts to grow. You might think I'm just some inhuman AI, but it's true. So it's okay. If it's for the sake of everyone else, I won't be afraid. Couldn't help but get lost in that voice. It's just too committed, too admirable, too fragile. No. You remember what you asked before? You remember what you asked before, Makoto? You asked what the difference is between a person and a program, right? Y yeah. That's good. When I talk to Alter Ego, I don't know. I have no idea how to answer that question. I think that maybe that's a question that even the program's creator can't answer. But I can say this. There's no question that Alter Ego is our friend. Kyoko. To be honest, I didn't want Alter Ego to push himself anymore. Because if we take any more risks, the Mastermind really will notice it. But let's do it, Makoto. Let's connect Alter Ego to the network. But he's our friend, so I want to make his I want to take his feelings into consideration. And he says that he wants to fight alongside his friends. If you were in his place, could you just sit by and do nothing in this situation? If you saw everyone else fighting and doing their best, could you just look the other way? Or would you stand up? Stand up tall next to everyone else and tell them you're their friend. Hey, are you guys fighting? If it's about me, please don't. I want to believe in myself. I want to be able to say, I know I can do this. So please, let me try. And besides, there's one place where the Mastermind might not notice. One place? Remember, there's another place besides here where there's no surveillance camera. A room without a surveillance camera. That's it. The secret room you told me about. I definitely remember there was no surveillance camera in there. I do believe you can connect to the connect to the network from there. I remember seeing an Ethernet port on the wall. However, just because there's no camera there doesn't mean there's no danger. There's no way to be sure the Mastermind isn't monitoring the network somehow. We'll also have to move Alter Ego, and the Mastermind may spot us going into the secret room. If they pick up on any of this, it, then it's all over. You're right. But despite all that, I still think we need to try. Because that's our best chance of finding any new clues. Kyoko, in that case... Will you let me carry him? There's no way there's no way you could hide him with what you're wearing, right? So let me do it. Okay then. I'll leave it to you. Thank you. Then let's get started. It's gonna be a little cramped for you, Alter Ego. Bear with us, okay? We started packing him up right away. I closed the laptop and stuffed it underneath my jacket. <laughs> it tickles. Shh. You can't talk right now. We're going to move you to another room. Until we get there, you have to be absolutely silent, okay? Understood. Your command has been implemented. Good. To have him react like a machine like that all of a sudden... I didn't know how to react. In the secret room, there are a bunch of different cables in one of the desk drawers. So there might be a network... So there might be a network cable in there? Assuming the mastermind hasn't taken it already. Well, all we can do is go and check for ourselves. Agreed. Let's go to the secret room. Uh, right, it is the secret room. It's in the boys' bathroom. This isn't where we need to go. Come on, we have to hurry. Oh, this boys' bathroom on the second floor, I think. Uh. 
Hey, Makoto. Are you sure all the documents are gone? I refuse to believe you. Go ahead and check again. What? Just hurry up and go. And to make sure you don't run off, I'm gonna wait right here. Oh, I get it. She's acting. She was so forceful, I thought I'd make her mad again somehow. Why are you just standing there? Hurry up and go. Uh, okay, okay, I'm going. Yeah. And be thorough. I'm counting on you. Okay, first we have to find a network cable. According to Kyoko, there should be a bunch of cables in this drawer. Hmm. Found it. This is a network cable, right? Now we just have to connect Alter Ego. I immediately got to work. I pulled out the laptop and connected it to the Ethernet port with the cable. And that should do it. Man, Wi-Fi is not the norm in this school? What is this, 2010 or something? Um, yeah, I think it worked. Just leave the rest to me. I swear I'll find something. I might even be able to connect to the outside world. If I can, I'll see if I can call for help. So please just wait a little while longer. Just hold tight and put your faith in me. So I was about to leave, I decided to leave him with one last thing. Friends? Even me? Thank you. Thank you, Makoto. How'd it go? Well, it went okay, but all the uh, documents were gone, just like I told you. My reply was an unintentional mix of acting and real feelings. I see. And there's nothing left for us here. Yeah. Goodbye. Before I knew it, Kyoko was walking away. She wasn't acting anymore, that much was sure. W was for sure. Uh, Kyoko! Yes? So, we're just gonna split up? Of course. I have no reason to stay with you at, th at this point. Well, maybe, but isn't that a little too direct? Should I hesitate and fumble for something to say? You're so high maintenance. That's not what I meant. I just had more I wanted to talk to you about, like... What are you going to do about Sakura? Well, something has to be done, it's true. But the way things are right now, there's no way to persuade anyone. They don't have the mind to listen. And then what should we... If we can find some new clue, that would likely change the situation. That's all we can hope for right now. Which is why Alter Ego... All we can do is wait and believe in our friends. You're right. That's our only option. We parted ways and I headed back to my room. I'm kind of tired, so I laid down in bed. Maybe it's because of the stress of moving Alter Ego, but I was way more tired than I realized. And before long at all, I had completely dozed off. Huh? The sharp sound of the doorbell pierced my sleepy haze and pulled me back into the real world. Whoops. Makoto, get out here. Kyoko, what's going on? Hina just came to see me, and she was white as a ghost. It sounds like something's happened. What? As soon as I heard those words, my heart started to beat a little faster. I suddenly found myself wide awake. She said for us to come to the rec room. The rec room? Okay, let's hurry. Makoto, Kyoko! Hino, what's wrong? Something's not right. In the rec room. What's inside? There was a window on the rec room door, and I hurried to look inside. When I did... Sakura? Is she unconscious? She's sitting up in the chair like she's bowing her head. What's going on? Did something happen to her? 
I was just walking past and I happened to notice her through the window, but I couldn't get the door open. I tried knocking and I tried calling her name, but she wouldn't respond. So what should we do? What are we gonna do? First of all, we need to get into that room. But the door's locked, right? If we break in, we'll be violating the school regulations. We're going to force our way in. I just said the door isn't locked. It's not locked because the rec room door doesn't have a lock. Huh? Then why? It feels like the door's pressing up against something inside the room. Is it the or is it the chair? Chair? Either way, this door isn't locked, which means as far as I can tell, that rule doesn't apply. Then there's no problem if we break in? Let's smash the window. That should be the fastest way. Okay, I'll go get something to break it with. Wait right here. Inside the rec room, Sakura still hadn't moved an inch. She's just unconscious, right? She... okay? I mean, it's Sakura, so I'm sure... Kyoko didn't reply. There was only silence. But that silence didn't last long. Here. Or here. I found a broom. In the classroom. Use it. You can handle this, right, Makoto? Come on, please hurry. Okay, you two stand back. I took hold of the broom and swung it as hard as I could. Aiming directly at the window, all it took was one solid hit. The window shattered into a hundred pieces, scattering across the rec room floor. I stuck my hand through the now open window and started jostling the chair leaning against the door. I cut my arm up pretty bad. The chair's pretty heavy, but if I could just... I pushed on it with all my strength and finally the knob turned. Sakura. I ran up to her as fast as I could. But the moment I laid my hand on her... Oh, she dead. All I felt was cold death. I could feel only the last lingering warmth of a living body. Life had abandoned Sakura's body. And then... Oh, there's the body announcement. A body has been discovered. After a certain amount of time, which you may use however you like, the class trial will begin. Danganronpa. Huh? Sakura's... Sakura's dead? She's really dead? I heard Hina talking, but my eyes stared steadily forward. I could only look on at Sakura's dead body. We didn't make it in time. It's happened again. Muttering to herself, Kyoko began to gently inspect Sakura's body. I wondered, was she confirming that Sakura really was dead? Checking for a pulse or a reaction? I have to go get them. I have to go get the others. On shaky legs, Hina left the rec room. And I... Why? Why did this have to happen? That's all I could say. I repeated it over and over again. I need to examine Sakura's body. I just stood there motionless behind her while she checked Sakura's corpse. Time passed. While I stood there, unable to do a thing, time just passed. After I don't know how long... I got everyone. Whoa, uh, uh, ogre? Oh, so she's dead, huh? Sakura's been killed, I see. As soon as they arrived, Kyoko began. You heard the announcement just now, right? So you get what this means. Sakura was murdered and some by somebody in this very room. Is what you were going to say. No. Whoever killed her is not just someone in this room. It was one of you. Hiro, Byakuya, Toko, one of you killed Sakura. Whoa. 
You're accusing us before we've even begun the investigation? I don't need to investigate anything. Because you hated her. You hated the sight of her. One of you did it. I know it. You know it? Jeez, I didn't know your power level would increase by that much just by getting mad. What are you doing here? Isn't it obvious? I'm here to hand out my little murder flyer. That's right. It's the next Monokuma file. Don't get so mad, Miss Asahina. Or you're gonna ruin that lewd little face of yours. Now then, with that, I... Hold on. There's something... Er, hold on. There's something I want to ask you. Huh? It was you, wasn't it? You killed Sakura. Uh-huh. Sakura wanted to challenge the Mastermind to a duel. Maybe you and her fought, and then... Then I killed her? Sorry, not quite. Actually, not even close. That whole thing is totally irrelevant now. Sakura came to a most regrettable end without even getting the chance to finish things with me. Which, thank God for that. It saved me the trouble of having to go through with our little fight. Because even for someone like me, it would have... It would have been no mean feat to take out take down a behemoth like that. I gotta tell you, I was actually pretty worried. I mean, she'd violated a rule by attacking me in the first place, but I wasn't able to punish her. So I don't know who it was, but whoever the Blackened is this time, I owe you one. You owe them one? Oopsie. Before you get all pissy potty at me, you better figure out who did it first. Because, I mean, your lives are all on the line, right? <laughs> what the hell? He owes them one? I hate him. I hate this whole thing. Well, I, for one, am glad it was Sakura. She was working for the Mastermind, after all. How can you say that now? Sorry. I don't have time for your, little, for your squabbling. The next game's already begun. If you want to be angry at someone, be angry at whoever killed Sakura. Right now, our top priority needs to be uncovering Sakura's killer. If we can't do that, we're all dead. Then let's decide who'll stand guard this time. I'll do it. Hina? I'm okay. Just let me handle it. Besides, I, I want to be here with Sakura. Okay, then Hina is guard number one. But we need one more. Kyoko, that's you. Me? You're always a thorn in my side. This time just stand by and watch quietly. Consider that an order. An order? Fine, I'll stay behind. Then it's settled. Let's begin, shall we? Hold on. Before that, there's something I want to say. Which is... Hiro, Byakuya, Toko, none of you are allowed to step foot in the crime scene. What? One of you killed Sakura. I won't let someone like that come anywhere near her. Don't be stupid. Our lives are in just as much danger as yours. We have every right to investigate. I don't care what you say. I'm not letting the one who killed Sakura get anywhere near her. Even if it means I have to use force, you're not getting in here. Well, it appears further discussion would be a waste of time. How about a compromise? I won't ask you to let all of us in. Just let me. What? You don't really care, do you? You're both useless anyway. Nope, don't really care. I'd rather spend my time coming up with another splendid fantasy involving Master anyway. And you, Hero, do you really object? If you're gonna go that far, what can I do? I mean, I don't have anything to hide, so why should I care? Then it's decided. Nothing's decided. I know how you feel, Hina, but you should agree to this request. But... We have to find out who killed Sakura. For those of us still alive, and to honor Sakura's memory. Fine. I guess that's okay. But no matter what, Byakuya, you absolutely aren't allowed to touch her. Naturally, who'd want to touch a filthy dead body? Bro. That's enough fighting. 
we need to focus on the investigation from here on out. Everyone keep this in mind. If we can't recover if we can't uncover Sakura's killer, all of us face execution. Finding out who killed Sakura. It's not a matter of hoping we can do it. If we want to survive, we have to do it. It's a kind of hopeless hope. We have no choice but to just do it. Alright. I better check the Monokuma file before anything else. The victim was Sakura Ogami. The time of death was estimated to be around 12 noon. The body was discovered in the rec room on the third floor of the school. There was evidence of a strong blow to the victim's head. No other injuries were noted. However, it seems at some point the victim suffered from violent vomiting of blood poison! I think the case this time might be a challenge. Why is that? The only way into the rec room is the door we just came through. And that door had been jammed shut with the chair from inside the rec room. Which means the killer would have had to escape somehow after barring the door. So if the door was blocked from the inside, there was no way in or out till we broke the window. And there's like zero escape, right? Zero escape, you say? In other words, this is a classic locked room murder. Locked room murder? I guess you might see this kind of thing a lot in mystery movies or books or whatever. Could it really happen in real life? Right before our very eyes like this? No. Are you curious to hear more about what a locked room murder entails? Sure, if you don't mind. When you break down this kind of murder mystery, there are four basic types. The first type is when the locked room is created after the actual crime is committed. This simply means that the killer commits his crime, then through some special method seals the room. This mainly involves some sort of trick involving locking the room. Basic approaches include using a string or simple mechanism. There are a number of variations. So for that, all we'd have to do is check the door to see if that's what it was, right? The second type is when the lo locked room already exists before the crime is committed. Oh? Basically, the killer uses a special contraption or tool from outside to target the victim inside. You push a switch and it fires a handgun. You shoot an arrow through a gap in the door, something like that. But in this case, that doesn't seem to fit. There are no guns or arrows in the school, and the door doesn't have any gap that would allow it. Yeah, I think we can probably cross that one off the list. The third type is when the killer stays in the room until it's opened up. What do you mean by that? They stay hidden, and when the doors open, they use the confusion to blend in with the group. They pretend they showed up along with everyone else, and that's that. That sounds like it could have been possible, maybe. Yeah. And the fourth and final type is when it wasn't actually a locked room at all. Not a locked room? By that I mean, there actually is an alternate escape route somewhere within the room. You see this a lot in novels and things, but in reality it's generally not possible. Then you think we can cross that one off too? I believe so, yes. So when it comes to locked room mysteries, those are the basics. So there are four possibilities, then Kyoko, which of these four cases seems the most likely in this case? That's a good question. Answering that should be our primary focus during this trial. But right now, I can't really say. I see. The way the killer set up the locked room. Until I figure that out, the truth behind Sakura's death will stay hidden. It's definitely a tough mystery. I need to concentrate and investigate as much as I can. For Sakura, if nothing else. Alright. So here's what I think happened. I don't, I don't know who did it, but I think I have a good idea of what happened. I think the killer hit Sakura once. She escaped into the rec room and locked, barricaded the door. Not realizing that it was already too late because at some point, she had ingested poison unknowingly. That's what I think happened. But, I doubt I'm going to be able to leave the room until, uh, you know, let's, let's try to leave the room. Yeah, I knew it. I wouldn't get to leave the room until I uh, found all the evidence I need. Let's start with the body. 
Sakura drew her last breath while sitting slumped forward in this chair. There's obvious evidence of the blow to the head Sakura suffered. Normally I wouldn't have any attempt believing that that's what killed her. According to the Monokuma file, she had also vomited blood. I can see a trace of blood on her lips for sure. So what would have caused her to vomit blood? The Monokuma file specifically said she hadn't suffered any other injuries. Maybe her getting hit on the head somehow caused her to start vomiting blood? Not a chance. Byakuya. However, your eyes have landed on a most interesting location. Interesting? Yes, most interesting. Don't you agree? No, I don't think I'd call it interesting. But it does make me wonder. The reason Sakura vomited blood absolutely has to be connected to why she died. This looks like some kind of wrapper. Uh, that's... Do you recognize it, Hina? Well, yeah, I mean, I gave it to her. That's a candy wrapper. Sakura got super upset when she found out Genocide Jack had attacked me, right? So after we left the nurse's office, I gave it to her. I thought it might help her calm down a little. So you gave that candy to Sakura. Fuck. I found a big box of it in the warehouse. I really like them. Fuck! Accidental murder! That's the worst kind of murder! Actually, as soon as we could get into the warehouse, I took the entire box back to my room. Oh, maybe it's not murder then. Maybe someone else poisoned the candy. Oh my god. Fuck, man. I don't know if I can handle this. I made sure nobody else could get their hands on him. You really like them that much? But I wanted Sakura to get a chance to try one for herself. That's why I gave it to her. But now, they've lost all their flavor. Hina. There are shards of glass scattered all around the chair Sakura was sitting on. The glass is all red and... These are the top and bottom sections of a bottle, right? So this must be this must have originally been a bottle. Huh? Something else on the ground near the glass. It's a figure. Fits in the palm of my hand. It's the Monokuma figure. Yeah, it was one of the bottles on the uh on the yeah. There are four red bottles lined up on the shelf. And there probably used to be five. And inside each bottle, there's some kind of Monokuma figure. I'm wondering, how did they get those figures inside the bottles? It's no different from your standard ship in a bottle. Huh? You know, where the bottle's opening is smaller than the boat placed inside. You've never seen that? Oh yeah, maybe I have. So this is the Monokuma version of that. A Monokuma bottle, if you will. I feel like I'm finally starting to make sense of things, little by little. The Monokuma bottle sitting on the shelf. The Monokuma figure we found on the ground. The red shards of glass, which probably started out as a bottle. Which would mean... Sakura must have been hit in the head with a Monokuma bottle, right? The shards of glass and the Monokuma figure are evidence of that. So I think it's safe to say the Monokuma bottle was the weapon. Hmm. The same shelf full of magazines. It's all different kinds of magazines here. Also blood. There's a blood stain in front of the magazine shelf. It must have come from Sakura, right? But that doesn't make sense. Why is it so far away from where she died? Hmm. I'd say the killer moved her to the chair, but that would go against the, uh... That would go against my hypothesis that she barricaded the room herself and then died.
It's around one o'clock right now. I don't know how I'm able to know that because this clock has no hands, but according to the Monokuma file, Sakura died around 12 noon, so roughly an hour ago. Was that when Kyoko and I were moving Alter Ego? Some kind of plastic container rolling around the entrance near the room. It looks like a protein drink, and it's empty. Sakura must have drank it. Everyone knows how much she loved her protein. She mentioned more than once how protein was good for all sorts of ailments. I wouldn't take that to heart if I were you. I know. But still, this protein can. It's got a label on it that says Chem A2. Which reminds me, Sakura mentioned how the chem lab had all kinds of health stuff, so she must have gotten this from the chem lab. But that's strange. Huh? What is? You see what's scattered around the can? Shards of light blue glass. They must be parts of the window I broke to get inside. Oh, shards of light blue glass. They must be parts of the window that I broke to get inside. And they, are not, they aren't just scattered around the can, they're also underneath it. Why does that matter? I can't say for sure yet, but you're probably going to want to take note of it. I feel like it'll become an important clue later on. Important clue? I'm not sure I see how... Okay, guess, uh... Oh. Open locker. Huh? The locker's open. They're on the inside. It's... A handprint? What's a handprint doing here? Looks like someone touched the inside of the locker and left a handprint in all the dust. It looks quite fresh, too. I'd say someone was hiding here in the locker and they left behind a little something extra. So then, maybe the killer hid in here until the locked room was open, don't you think? During all the confusion, they popped out and joined the rest of the group. Unfortunately, that's not a possibility. Huh? Why not? Think back. Before we opened the door, we looked inside the room, right? Oh, yeah. The locker was already open at that point. So there's no way someone could have hidden in there until after we opened the door. Yeah, so then... What does this handprint mean? God damn! what else is there to, to examine? Do I just gotta talk to everyone now? We already know who did it. Byakuya, Toko, or Hiro, it had to be one of them. They couldn't stand the sight of her. You agree with me, don't you, Makoto? Um, well, I don't want to say anything for sure without finding out more. Then let me help you find out more. You see, Sakura asked all three of them to meet with her. You know where? right here in the rec room. What? After I went to the nurse's office this morning, Sakura and I both left together, right? Well, eventually, she went off on her own. But when I saw her again after that, she told me... She said she'd left a note for each of them. She asked them to meet her in the rec room by noon. By noon? The Monokuma file said she died right around then. I'm telling you the truth. I heard it right from Sakura herself. And... I tried to stop her, but she wouldn't listen. She said not to worry, that she just wanted to talk to them. And this is what happened. If I'd stopped her, by force even, this never would have happened. Hina, it's possible not to have regrets. Or it's impossible not to have regrets, I know. But the fact that she had asked those three to meet with her, she asked them to come to the rec room at noon, the same time and place she ended up dying. It might be good to confirm what I heard with the three of them directly. What do you want? You're bothering me. Um, there's something I'd like to talk to you about. Make it quick. Is it true that Sakura asked you to meet her in the rec room? So you found out. Interesting. Then it's true? I did receive a note to that effect, yes. But what fool would do that? Would do what it said and risk being killed by that monster? So you didn't go see her? Of course not. I ripped the note to shreds and threw it away. 
I hadn't seen Sakura today at all. Byakuya says he didn't go see her. Is that the truth? Well, until I can prove otherwise, I have no choice but to accept that as fact. Boy. If you're all finished, please remove yourself from my sight. Okay, thanks. But for Sakura to have been killed... Yeah, she's not the type who'd go down without a fight. So. And she certainly didn't, I would say. She was the ultimate martial artist, strong in body, mind, and spirit. So how was the killer able to get the upper hand on her? I wonder, did someone get the upper hand? They must have taken her by surprise, right? Certainly. They would have needed her if they they would have needed to if they expected to stand any chance against her. God damn, what else is there to investigate? Or to uh to, to examine? Let's look at the body again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Multiple blows to the head. Vomited blood. The magazine rack, maybe? This door is the only way in or out of the rec room. The door doesn't have a lock and there's no evidence that the mountings have been tampered with. The only notable change to the door is the smashed window, which happened of course when I broke it to get inside. There's no evidence that any kind of string or mechanism was used on the door. In other words, I don't see anything suspicious about the door itself. The chair was shoved up against the doorknob, so we couldn't get the door open. There's no evidence that any kind of string or mechanism was used on the chair. In other words, there's no reason to think the chair had anything special done to it. Hmm. Having examined both the door and the chair, there's no doubt the reason the door didn't open was simply because the chair was shoved up against it. They kept the doorknob from turning and the door from opening. There was no evidence of the door or chair being tampered with. There was no evidence of the door or chair being tampered with or anything like that. So the killer must have created the locked room from the inside, not from the outside. Well, Makoto, have you finished with your general investigation? Yeah, I think so, for the most part. Yeah. Then you should probably talk with people now. I'm on guard duty, so I can't leave. Which is why I've decided you'll go in my place. She's decided? It's gotten a lot more pushy since we had our issue, but she's right. I do have to go talk to the others. Sakura wanted to meet with two other people. I need to hear what they have to say. Hmm. Those other two probably went back to their rooms. I really want to continue the episode, but it's like 9 o'clock at night right now, and I don't, I don't want to be up all night. Fuck, man. I feel like if I go... I feel like if I go much further, it's going to jump right into the trial, and you, you know how fucking long those take. But, you know, I... I guess I'll just have to, uh... force myself to be patient and say that, uh... if you enjoyed this video, the no further actions required on your part. If you have suggestions... On what else you'd like to see me play let me know in the comments and i'll see you when i see you ah!